Try to what? Try to be here. Now, I do realize that you have extenuating circumstances. Some of you have work. Uh, when I mean work, I don't mean a part-time job. I mean 48 hours a week or more, 60 hours a week. And I do realize the only thing I ask you to do is try, like on your way to work or <coughs> that morning, come by and bring me a slip of paper, and I will count you here. If you, if you make the trip to come by this school, I will give you credit for being here because of work or whatever. Um, then it's the point to say, I want to try to keep you in the class so I don't have to do what? The paperwork. Everybody get that? All right. Because, like I say, if I drop you, 90 time, nine times out of 10, you're going to come to me and ask me to reinstate you. And then, I'm, like I say, I'm going to get mad. I'm going to have to get mad. I'm going to say, all right. And then I'll have to do all that. So, all right, what's next on there? I'm not even going to pull up the handout because it's too much trouble. What's next? Okay, my class is based on if you are lazy, you flunk. If you are if, if you are a good student, you'll pass. Period. If you meet anybody that has flunked my class, you better just move away from them slowly because something's going to rub off on you and it's not going to be pleasant. It's going to be laziness or synaptic problems, issues. Okay? Because it's impossible to fail my class. I mean, fail it. It's impossible. Heck, I give you 24 points on the test before you even take it. I mean, with, with easy questions. Have you talked to anybody that's had my class before? Anybody? Raise your hand. What'd they say? Just give me one word. What'd they say? Huh? You said you were the greatest. Oh, be quiet. That's <laughs> what you said. Oh, well, not all that. What'd, you, what'd they say? Uh, easy. Easy. Math is not easy, is it? But how's my class easy? I covered the syllabus. I just present it in a way that you can grab onto. Who else? What else? Anybody else? What did Junior say? Fun teacher. I try to be. I don't try to be like some of these <laughs> others that got their panties in a wad. What'd they say? A math teacher. A math teacher. A bad teacher. <laughs> oh. <laughs> she. She needs to go to group therapy. She quit going to group, and she needs to, you tell her that she needs to start going back to group on Tuesday night. It meets at the Civic Center on Tuesday night. You tell her I said that, okay? She's a good friend of mine. She, I, we went to school together. What else? Anybody else? I, I did not realize that, that that person I was talking about was in the hospital, and this is Lori from the hospital. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I had to help her. Yeah. yeah, and last time I saw her, she was in a wheelchair, but I don't know if she's still in a wheelchair. She still has some pretty severe health problems. She can walk. Yeah, well, that's good. She was, yeah. yeah, she was in a whole lot worse off condition, and I, yeah, I had to, I had to help her through that. Yeah. Any others? You will not meet, and I'm confident. I'm very confident. No, <laughs> I, I promise you, you will not meet anybody that says that I'm unfair, that I am a terrible teacher, that I do not take time for students, that I don't teach well. The reason is, and the reason I'll tell you that, is because I treat students the way I want to be treated. And I remember being in that seat. I remember coming out of Westside not being able to add fractions. I remember being 356 out of 400 students at graduation. I remember that. So, and as long as I don't forget that, I will always teach with the enthusiasm to help students learn. Okay? So, now I don't know what, uh, I'm, I'm scared to ask it. I'm not going to ask, but I don't know what, face, I mean, uh, right, my professor says, but I've heard it says good things, but if it says bad things, I don't want to hear it. Okay? <laughs> uh, what does the next thing say? Yes, when I talk about students in general, when I say you people, I don't mean you in here, I mean students in general. I do not sit at home and say, well, uh, I really don't like Ms. McClellan.
done. Uh, I don't like her family, so I'm going to talk about her dad in class. Uh, I have a life, okay? <laughs> I have a kid, I have two kids, and a mom, and a bunch of cows, and a bunch of hay to cut down, three pieces of machinery, a bulldo two bulldozers, and a, I got a lot to do, okay? I do not sit at home and say, oh, I wonder who I can pick on tomorrow. I do good to remember y'all's names, okay? Really. And with six students, six times 30 is 180. That's 180 students. I've, and I'm trying, when I stare at you, I'm trying to learn your names, okay? I already know some of your names right now. Some of you that I don't like. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> and I'm starting to worry. You know why I'm worrying? Because there's three or four, three or four of y'all in here whose mamas and daddies know me, okay? <laughs> And that's not a good thing, okay? What did Mr. Stancil say? Where's Miss Stancil? What did she? What did you talk to your granddaddy? I did. I'll you talk need to. to him right huh? You I'll need to. to. Call when you walk up to him, say, "What's up, Stancil?" That's what. <laughs> Stancil. That's a little like Mario. Does he still got black hair and black mustache, or is it gray? It's still gray. It is. Well, is his, is his wife still slapping him around every once in a while? I don't know. That's a joke. <laughs> They're good people. They're real nice. Did you talk to your dad? Yes. What did he say? Did he say that I was a, a dummy in high school? He just laughed. <laughs> <laughs> like, Hubert teaching? Huh? <laughs> but we did used to knock down people in the dark hall. <laughs> we used to do that. We used to come out of the lunchroom and there'd both be a bunch of dope smoking hippies in there. And we, could <laughs> knock them down. we couldn't stand those guys. I don't think they closed up the dark hall at Westside, did they? And they got doors on it now. Well, it has doors on it now. It's all and lights. And lights? <laughs> <laughs> the only lights that were in the dark hall were from that stairwell They're on the left, and it would shine in there, and them, them dope heads in there would be in there, and we just, oops, sorry, <laughs> knock them down. They were worthless. They still are worthless. Anyway, your dad wasn't in there. I don't think your dad was in there. I mean, you know, Pendleton. I don't see who else. Angie was in there. She was a pothead. Yeah. <laughs> tell, her, tell her that she was a pothead. That's why she has to go to cruise. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> who else? Who, uh, go ahead, let's hear it. Who else? Who else, mom and daddy, aunt, uncle, know me? Anybody? Good. Okay. Good. That's a good thing. And whatever they tell you, it's a lie. Okay? It's a lie. Except for what Miss Robinson said, that I was the greatest teacher in the world. All right. So... You know, I like to have fun. I like interaction. I like for you to interact with me. I do not like for you to interact with each other while I'm teaching. Now, that's a pet peeve, okay? Another pet peeve. If I make a mistake on the board, don't wait until the end of the problem to tell me. <laughs> All right? And do not, and I might have said this before, I do have one pet peeve. If you want to make me mad, if I make a mistake on the board and Miss McLean says, Hubert, I think you made a mistake. I don't need Bubba and 15,000 people say, yeah, man, you made a mistake. That is real frustrating, okay? How many people does it take to tell me that I made a mistake? One. I don't need Miss McLean to tell me I made a mistake and 15 other people five seconds later say, yeah, man, I saw that a while ago. You made a mistake. Oh, that drives me bananas. I don't know why. I really don't know why. I don't know why we knocked over the potheads. I don't know that either. <laughs> but that is one thing that really irritates me. All right? The second thing that irritates me is people talking while I am writing. Now, if I hear Miss McLean talking to, what's your last name? Devo. Devo. Like Diva, Devo, Devo. Devo. Okay. I got it. I got it. This association thing, okay? If I hear Miss McLean talking to Mr. Devo and they are talking about, well, you need to look up the Z score here and there, then I'm, I'm okay with that because they are talking about math. But if I hear, is it Miss Krakos or what, what's your, huh? Your Neil's? Oh, gosh. Mm. Bless your heart. He goes to group two. All right. <laughs> if Miss Junkins, 
is talking to Mr. Harbin, and they're talking about what they're going to do on Saturday night, that's going to piss me off. Okay? That's just what? It's rude. It's disrespectful. Okay? So just kind of keep it to a low whisper and try not to keep try to keep it on task, and I'll be okay. It is Harbin, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm trying to learn your names. It's going to be a lot of this. A lot of, this is a big class with a lot of females and none, hardly any males. One, two, three, four, five. Five, right? Five to 30. That's one six. That's point one six. One six? Something like that. Oh, six. I didn't, I didn't catch one. Where's the other one? I did that. One, two, three, four, five, six. Did I say six or five? Oh, uh, okay. Six out of 30, that's one fifth. That's point two. That's point two. That's pretty good numbers, isn't it? I, I like them. But anyway, um, guys, y'all not going to have a chance in here. So if y'all say something is wrong, it's probably not probably probably not going to be worth anything because the women are going to tell jump on you and tell you you're wrong. <laughs> so because they are women are always what right. right. <laughs> and as long as you guys know that. You will have a nice marriage, okay? I I had a nice marriage, but I just got tired of cleaning up the house and doing everything. I just got tired of doing everything else, okay? Period. So, anyway, so what's next? Yeah, well, that's I, I'll let y'all read that. Who, okay, I hate. Know it all. You ever had the guy in the class, and it's usually a male, sorry, and it's usually a guy that's trying to tell the teacher how to do something, whether it's psychology or whether it's nursing or whether it's math. There's four types of people in the room. There is the person that has no clue what's going on in the class. They haven't had probability and statistics, and they're latching on to every note and every word and every film strip and every video trying to figure out how to do it. You may, you may be one of those people. You may be a person that took probability and statistics in high school and made a D or a C because the teacher was terrible or you were worried about other things. Okay, Not, nobody in here was worried about other things in high school. You may have been in Math 120 and you made an A and you still remember it and you think this is a waste of time, but you know the material, the only thing is you keep your mouth what? Shut up. And then there's the know-it-all. That's the guy, and it's usually a guy, that starts to blurt out stuff, and half the time he blurts out stuff, it's what? It's wrong. And it's usually the guy that you jump into the restroom in the hallway when you see them what? Coming down the hallway, you jump into, men jump into the women's restroom or whichever one they can because they see them coming. That's, that's the know-it-all. And the first time, if if I pick up on it, the first time I'm going to say something and I'm going to say in your degree and then what? The second time I pick up on it and it's the same person, I'm going to say, and how many degrees do you have? Third time I'm going to ask you to leave. Now I've never had a problem. I did have a problem last semester. I had a, a little problem and I nipped it in the bud right quick. And um, uh, I was teaching trig, and it was in 236 right over here. It had about 15 students in there, and I was starting about trig, and I was showing the basics because a lot of people don't know how to do trig because they've never taken it. And I was showing the basics, and he said, uh, oh, so we're not going to go into the identities? I said, uh, did you write the book? <laughs> and I never did have a problem with him after that. But what he was trying to do, he was trying to show everybody what? How much he knew. Well, he never did have a problem. You know what he made out of the class? Let's see. If he knew it all, what should he have made? An A. An A. But he didn't. He made a C. Usually the know-it-all don't know as much as they what. And let's put this in perspective. First of all, I love Tri-County Tech. When I got out of Clemson, that's the first place I wanted to, and that's where I wanted to teach. I wanted to teach at Tri-County Tech. And I, that's why I've been here for 19 years, because I love it. Because if it wasn't for Tri-County Tech, I wouldn't be teaching. 
You are at Tri-County Tech for a reason. Right. I had to go to Tri-County Tech because I made 800 on SAT and I think that's putting your name down. Okay? I was 356 out of 400. I was not the brightest student. Was it because I was stupid? No. It was because I had more important things to do in high school. And there was two things that were more important. Can you name them? Yeah. Girls and football. That's it. You didn't think I was in chess club? <laughs> well, the golf club what, what, what do you think all right so that was the only things I had on my mind all right I had to go to Tri-County Tech because I had to start from the beginning and not have to redo high school now, I'm not saying you have to do that but if you had 1800 SAT score would you be at Tri-County Tech no not necessarily unless you just by choice what I'm saying is if you have know it all and you think you know everything then you made 1800 on SAT, you should be at MIT or Cambridge or Clemson or USC or why would you be at Tri-County Tech unless it's by choice? And why would you be in Math 120 when you should be in Calc 1, 2, or 3? Because if you know it all, you made a 4 on all the, what, what do you call them? The test? AP, AP test. Because if you know it all, and I'm not talking to the people that are smart, okay? I'm talking to the people that what? think they're smart. There's totally two different things here. All right? So don't take it the wrong way. Some of you made 1,800. I'm not talking about you. I'm talking about the ones that think they made 1,800 or think they can make 1,800. I've never had a problem, so let's just try to, let's just try to stay with the first three. The people that want to learn, the people that need the cobwebs knocked loose, and the people that have already taken the class, but they need to take it for college credit. Let's just leave it at that. And that's pretty much my class. Now, did I give y'all Wabbit EMU? Did I give y'all that? Yes or no? Huh? Oh, you already got it. Okay. Write it down. Wabbit, as in Elma Fudd, Wabbit EMU. Get your cell phones out right now. Yes, get your cell phones out. Now, if you got this old flip phone back in the 1980s, it ain't gonna work, okay? A smartphone. And go to your, what is it? Uh, mine is called Play. What's, what's the, app the app store? Go to your app store, thank you. And mine is called something Play, Play Store, thank you. Uh, uh, your Android is called Play Store. Your uh, iPhone is called what? App. Go and look up Wabbit, W A B B I T. EMU, and you should be able to pull up a calculator of your choice. Now, remember, iPhone people are up here. Y'all know a little bit like this. My daughter's got an iPhone. Y'all up here. Now, us uh, Android people, we don't wealth over here. <laughs> we get it for free. Okay? Well, y'all don't talk about it. What do you have? Uh, I guess you're going to have to do without. No, I don't know. Go, you're going to have to do a, do a search. You are a loser. You're going to fail this class. Go, go Google it. See if you can pull it up with an iPhone on Google. The, go, the uh, Android people should be able to pull it up, and you should be able to get a, a calculator. I would suggest the TI-83, 84, or 84 Plus, 83 Silver, any of those. You don't need a big TI-89, that's calculus and it's more complicated. Uh, it's going to ask you, oh my god, I need to go into cardiac arrest. <laughs> it's going to ask you to do a library, go ahead and do it, or you won't be able to pull up the calculator. It's going to say, uh, Wabbit has to make a library, go ahead and do it. And then, Trey, is that a tablet back there? Will you tell me if it does it okay on there? I want to know because other classes How's the iPhone people coming? I'm sorry, how is the iPhone people coming? <laughs> no, the iPhone, the iPhone people last semester, they found a way to do it. Okay, Google Wabbit EMU for iPhone. See what it says. You should have some way to get it. Yeah, create a wrong, oh, create a what? It's always said, create, create a wrong, or... Create, 
create a ROM. Help me create a ROM. For you droid people, it's going to say create a ROM. You hit that and it'll and show me when you get it. Show me when you get it. No, you keep going. I want to see your image, which you'll pick. TI-84 Plus, TI-83 Silver Plus, each one of those. They all work the same. And then when you get it to come up, go ahead and hit finish. semester they did. They said they had to pay for it. <laughs> now, you might have to get used to being such a small cheapo. There you go. Here, you can see this one better. See there? Graph the calculator on your phone. Okay, the Android people, we're going to go on with class while the iPhone people are still working. <laughs> I like to pick on iPhones because my son and my daughter, my son's seven, have iPhones. That's, there's a reason. I can't get into that, but there's a reason. And uh, make them random so I can track it on my phone. And the reason I need to do that is for another reason. But anyway, uh, both of them, they think they're so high and mighty with their iPhones. And I just like picking on them. See what the download on there is. What is that? Is that a page two? Or? Yeah, I don't know. Okay, I see. Just, I just start using Unless they've just cut it out for iPhone people. Okay, well, anyway, why don't you do this? Why don't you do TI app for iPhone? Try that. on it. TI-83 is good. TI-84 is good. You don't need no more than TI-84 because TI-89 and the HP-51, those are calculus based and if you just want to look big, that's fine but you don't, it's more complicated to work than the TI-83 and 84. TI-81 is good. TI-82 is good if you can find one. They're ancient but those are the little blue ones that they gave you in junior high and high school. Little blue ones. TI-81, TI-82, TI-83, TI-84. Any of those is good. I do not like the TI-86, so if you have one, you need to bring the manual and learn how to do it yourself. Because I don't like those. They should have never been made. They're backwards of the TI-84 and 83, and it's just yuck to use them. Okay. What's the next handout? I gave you, what about my information? I gave you my information, how to contact me. Did I do that? Okay, what else? I gave you the uh, class. What about my locator card? Do you have that? No. Did we go over that? No. Yep. No. You want to do my class. <laughs> yes, no, no. Everybody get your locator card out. I'm just going to go over that real quickly and tell you that I'm only in my office pretty much on Friday from uh, 5 to, I mean, from 8 till 2. 
and or 8.30 to 1.30, I can't remember what I put on there. And there is a time between, on my Monday and Wednesday class, I may go out and grab some lunch and be in the office somewhere in there that 11 to 12.45, I may be in there a little bit too. Um, you really won't need me for office hours because remember, I'm taking 12 days class time that I would be doing tests you send me ask my instructor and I go over your questions in class because I have 12 extra days or 13 however many you came up with so let's go on to, to course compass and let's see what we can come up with I'm sorry my labs plus okay. <laughs> it's the same thing go ahead and write that down course compass my lab plus and my math lab, they're all the same. The only difference is basically enrollment, how you enroll. Since y'all have enrolled by the school, since you didn't have to go in and put a username in, all you had to do was put access code in, the school did the rest, that's why it's called My Labs Plus. If you had to do it, put in H. McClure and put in a password and put in access code, then it's called Course Compass. That's the difference. All right, it's the same thing. All right, so here y'all is, right there. Now, there are four buttons that I want you to write about in your notes. And I'm going to write them on here. Probably is not calibrated, and it might not even work. not calibrated. Hold on just a minute. I don't want to calibrate it. It'll only take a second. It's all Bush's fault. Where did it go? Right there. And it's calibrated. Number one, homework. Why do you think that's the number one button? Because it's where you find what? Homework. Your homework. I will get an email from somebody that will ask me, where do I find the homework? And that's from somebody that just don't come to class and don't read the handout. They just that you ever met a person that won't do anything but just ask a question, uh, teacher questions? They won't look at the book, they won't open the book, they won't open, just ask the question. Just ask the teacher, ask the teacher, ask the teacher. Well, think about what happens if you do that to your boss at work. The boss will tell you to get away from him or her, or they'll fire you. Because where do you find the best information at workplace? Do you find it from your boss, or do you find it from co workers? Huh? Co-worker. The boss don't want to deal with stuff like that. So, read. Find information yourself. And then if you can't find it, that's when you ask questions. Test number two. Why did I not, why did I not circle quizzes? Because I don't give them. Okay? So, all you need to worry about is test. Now, if you hit test right now, you ain't going to find any. You're going to have a bunch of generic tests on there. You can take those just for fun, but they do not influence your grade at all. They come with the book. Okay? When you see my test, it'll say Hubert's Unit 1 test, Hubert's Unit 2 test, Hubert's Unit 3 test, Hubert's Unit 4 test. Okay? And you're not going to see those until we get toward the end of Unit 1. Study plan. This is not a button for you, so I'm not, I mean, it's not a button for me, so I'm not going to name, give it a number. This is strictly for the student. Student, extra, problems, practice. 
does not influence your grade at all. Practice. Does not influence your grade, it doesn't hurt your grade, it doesn't help your grade. All it does is give you extra problems to practice, extra videos, extra support, uh, just basically extra problems. Now this one you might have to think about because this one's real tough. Grade book. What do you think the grade book is for? Huh? Your grades. You have four unit tests, you have homework, and you have final exam. Those are six items that will be in that. That's it. Period. It's not complicated. Please do not call me or email me the last day of finals and say, what's my grade? Because I will not respond. Because I've already told you. Also, I think I've already covered this, but I'm going to cover it again. I give you seven, six to seven gimmies on each of my each of my tests, and I'm going to show you those. Each test. Now, if I give you a test with 20 questions on it, how many points is that that I'm already giving you? Well, they're five points each, so that'd be what? 30 to 35 points per, per test. And where do those gimme problems come from? The handout, syllabi, anything that I cover on those handouts. How many tests do I give you? Four. So by the end of the semester, how many points have I given you? I don't even know how much that is. 100 and what, 40, 30? I don't know. 120, 130 points. What is that? That's another test grade. I have given you another test grade just mathematically in points. So at the end of the semester, oh, something else. How many tests do I give you through the whole semester? 12 unit tests. Good God, Hubert, where did 12 come from? Well, you tell me. Huh? You can take each test up to three times. So how many tests have I given you? 12. How many do I drop? I drop eight. True? Drop. So how many do I... Test you. I mean, how much do I grade you on? Four tests are graded. And I give you an extra test right here that's not even calculated because this test is the, this average is divided by four, but it includes a fifth test grade. So what should you not ask me for at the end of the semester? Do not ask me for extra points or extra credit at the end of the semester, and don't ask me to drop your final or your lowest test grade because I've already done that eight times. Okay? I want you everybody to write that down because I don't want anybody to forget that because at the end of the semester when you have an 82.5 I'm at an 89.2 and you come to me boo-hoo and I'm sorry I've done giving you and I may give you even more of these because they're telling us now to give more of the, of the test questions that are in the, in the syllabus. Just make the test longer because you don't have to calculate on those. It's just me. And I have, and, and this is going to be a test question right here. How many points are given based on a 20? Based, if I give you a test, if I give you four tests, 20 points a piece with six give me questions. How many points am I giving you per semester? Or something like that. Or I might ask you, what's a give me question? And I'll have four choices. Three will be totally stupid, and one will be the right answer. Um, I will ask this type question. I will ask this question. Do I drop your lowest test grade? 
at the end of the semester, do I drop below a test grade? At the end of the semester is the key word. No, I do not drop anything at the end of the semester except your lowest final grade. And that's all about the, uh, I don't know how I got on that. I thought I was talking about my birthday party. Oh, well, I was. Oh, we was talking, I think we, somehow we got on, oh, well, I ain't gonna worry about it. Oh, we're on, uh, we're on, yeah, yeah, we're on this. That's what we're on. Stat Crunch is a glorified uh, Excel spreadsheet. I'm not gonna worry too much about that. We'll play with it a little bit, but that ain't necessary for your grade. Ebook is number four. And that's how you print out your book. Now we're gonna go through and look at it. Mr. Nelson, what time is it? It is 1.42. What time is class over? Uh, what? I can't hear you. 2.10. All right, Ms. Cochran, I want you to tell me when it's about 2.05, okay? All right. Ms. Cochran, did I say anybody else? No. Okay. I don't need 15. Oh, it's Bob after, man. <laughs> Bubba sitting in the back half asleep. Yeah, man. All right. So let's go to homework. And I'm going to go to chapter three because that's math questions. I don't want to do no definitions. I ain't no English teacher. Now, most of you, I would say, without even taking a raise of hand, probably 90, no, 80% of you have done um, well, let's try it again. 90% of you have done homework on course compass before. Okay? Right quick. Everybody, anybody that has used course compass before, or my labs plus, go ahead and raise your hand right now. High, raise it up high. Okay, 50%. Okay? 50% of y'all, y'all are in trouble because y'all don't know how to use it. It is a very valuable, very good way for students to get over the hump when they're doing their homework. You ever been doing your homework and you get to a problem like number 16 and you can't do the rest of your homework because you can't get past number 16? You ever had that problem? I have all the time when I was in high school. So this, these buttons over here help get you by until you can't do anything, you can't get it then, then you use Ask My Instructor. So, help me solve this. Don't know how to do the problem, I'm gonna hit help me solve this. What is help me solve this? Well, let's say that you have this problem. I'm, 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 I'm jumping into another explanation here. 2x plus four, is equal to 16. And you don't have any idea how to do that problem, so you go to the tutor lab. Hey, that's all. You go to the tutor lab, coffee here, I have to tell you guys. You need to lay off the Marlboro Reds, okay? <laughs> all right, I'm just kidding. Um, you go to the tutor and you say, hey, there's a nice looking tutor over there, I'm gonna go sit beside him. And you go sit beside him and he goes, okay, you got an algebra problem. What's the objective of algebra? And he asks you, and you say, get the variable what? By itself. And then he says, well, what do you need to do to get the variable by itself? Because this would be two. What do you need to get rid of? Speak up, people. The four. The four. So you say, how do you get rid of, and then the tutor says, how do you get rid of a positive four? And then he says, do you do it on one side? Yeah. Do it on the other side. And then the tutor says, okay, you, now you have 2x is equal to 12. Now how do you get rid of a multiplying by two? Divide by, divide by two, and you divide by two, and x is equal to six. 
What that tutor has done, besides explaining to you how to do the problem, what did that tutor do all throughout the problem? Asked you questions and made you think. All right? That's called a guided tutor or a guided lecture is what it's called. It's a learning style. Write that down. When you hit, help me solve this, you're going to hit a guided lecture, a guided tutorial. That means it's going to ask you what? Now, who in here is not going to like the guided tutorial? Anybody want to take a guess? Huh? What? No, 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 no. That's a good guess, though. The guys. Why? Guys cannot stand instruction. Just show me the picture. Okay? Santa Claus. Santa Claus comes. Bobby wants the bicycle. Okay? Daddy has to put the bicycle together. Okay? Daddy says, I need a box. Mama and girlfriend's over here going, well, here's the direction. I don't need no direction. <laughs> so the guy, the caveman, I'm sorry, the guy, he puts the box together looking at the picture. Looking at the picture of the box. Okay, he's finished. He puts it under the Christmas tree. Meanwhile, the wife or the girlfriend is picking up after the caveman, I mean, after the guy. And she notices there's several, what? Hard screws. So she asks the caveman, and there's a man, what are all these? And what does the man always tell her? <clears throat> Extra parts, just in case the people didn't send all the parts. Meanwhile, Bobby's in the ditch. Because <laughs> the wheel fell off. <laughs> Guys hate what got directions. I don't need directions. Well, isn't that the fast fair we passed two miles ago? Oh, it's got the same little bald headed man in there doing the cash register. No, I know where I'm at. And we just don't have to check in until 3 o'clock. <laughs> Guys hate direction. So I'm telling you, the guided lecture is good. Who will use this? The person that really is struggling to learn how to do the subject. That's the number one person. The one person that I told you has never had probability or never had algebra or never had whatever subject. That's the person that's going to use the guided lecture. Okay? So what does that mean? Well, that means the person that's struggling the most, you might want to use that first button. The second button is view an example. What does it mean? Or what, is it, what does it do? Well, let's take the same problem. 2x plus 4 is equal to 16, or whatever problem you put in there. You go into tutoring lab, you sit over here, you say, well, that guy took too long. I'm going to go sit over here beside this girl and see how she teaches. So you go sit beside her, and she goes, okay, you have an algebra problem. Now, we all know that to, to, to uh, do algebra, we need to get the variable by itself. The variable's right here, so we need to get rid of this 4, and you know by the theory of equality that what you do on one side, you got to do on the other, and that renders 2x is equal to 12. Now you've got a one-step equation. You divide by 2 because that undoes multiplication, and by the theory of equality, if you do it on one side, you have to do it on the other, so your answer is x is equal to 6. What's the difference in the first tutor and the second tutor? No question. The tutor shows you step-by-step step how to do it. That's for the people that needs cobwebs in that tutor. That's for the people that remembers a little bit and don't need all the in detail underneath stuff that you don't know. So that's, some of you guys might like this. But most of the guys are going to want the video. Okay, because they're visual learners. This is for the learner that wants the cobwebs not, not blue. This is for the one that took Math 120 in high school and made a C or a D because you didn't get all the concepts. Or algebra, or whatever the case may be. So you might want to think about that when you're using these two buttons. So view an example, no question. That's the difference between the two. The third one is 
called video. Now I'm not going to say too much about that because people, a video is a video. I met her at a conference. She is one of the co-authors of the book. You don't want the author because he, he'd shake your hand and make you fall asleep. <laughs> this guy, this this girl, she's good. She's about, I think she's about six foot, six two. She looks like a volleyball slash basketball player. And uh, she don't hold her liquor very, no, I'm just kidding. This is, that's a joke, okay? Uh, but she's very nice, very nice, and she, she does very well explaining uh, stuff. And this would be for the person, again, the one that's very lost or the one that don't want to read a bunch of questions or a bunch of explanation, just show me how to do it. That's your visual learners. You're going through the different learning styles that there are of people. I have to know how to do the average. Okay. And that's how you do that. Now, some of you that don't like videos and like computer geeky stuff, and I'm one of those people. Animation. In this activity, you will examine different measures of the center. This is a computerized video. It's a difference. That's the difference. It's not a human video. It's a computerized video. This is a mixture between visual, that, visual learners and guided lecture learners. Guided learners like the questions and the detail, the visual learners like the visual. So you put them together, you have a visual guided or a guided visual learner. And it has next buttons, so you can go as fast and slow as you want. To. There are several different measures of center, and here we consider four of them. Mean, median, mode, and mid-range. And it goes on and talks okay, about, just like the video. You find the sum of all values then divide that by the number of Some values. people feel like they have a little bit more control values, with this and then divide by the number than of the values. video. Here are two and, and it has a little bit more information than the video. One, the mean is sensitive to extreme values. That is, a small number of exceptionally large or small values can have a substantial effect. Okay. Stat crunch. Oh, textbook. Well, the textbook is pretty self-explanatory. The textbook is for you readers. Some of y'all that read War and Peace in like three days. Some of you that read like four books in a day. You know, I can't read the funny paper without falling asleep. I'm one of those people. Anybody in there like this? You read one page and you, you fall asleep. <laughs> Some people can read 20 books and not fall asleep. I can't read one page. I'm sitting there, and, and I'm standing, I mean, sitting in a chair, and I'm sitting there reading, and I just doze off. I don't know why. But anyway, for those readers in here, this is basically reading learning style. You just go, you get a textbook, and it takes you exactly where this material is being introduced into your book. So if you turn to page 80, you'll see this material. So that's a different learning style. Uh, I'm not going to go into stat crunch because that is not beneficial. It's beneficial for time purposes, but not for you understanding. Um, stat crunch is a glorified um, spreadsheet, and I'll show you how to use all of them. Tech help shows you how to use the spreadsheets, calculators, the stat crunch. That's not, that's going to help you with time, but it's not going to help you with understanding. Print. How do I print? Print, why would I print just one problem? Mostly to hand to me to go through over in class. But you don't even have to do that with Ask My Instructor. So that's really irrelevant. Printing this one problem is really, not many people use that. But why would I print the whole assignment? Y'all can answer. It's not rhetorical. Why would I print as a student? Why would I print the whole assignment? To work, on to work on it conventionally. Or to put in the notes and 
when people go through the homework problems, find the problem that I'm doing, because I give you the number and then you find it and you do the note. That way when you do your homework, you will have some problems to use. Some people do it conventionally, like the paper and pencil, take it home, work on it, then go back in, copy the note. So that's why you would print out the whole assignment. There's so many things you can do with, the, with this website. It's up to you, it's up to the individual student. And then you come to the most important button, Ask My Instructor. Ask My Instructor is used when you cannot figure out after you've tried all the other things. Ask My Instructor is sent, it'll send a hyperlink straight to my email, and then I will put it in a 120 folder, and then we will go over it every day when class starts. If I get 20 questions, I will go over 20 questions. If I get two, I'll go over two. If I get none, what am I gonna do? I'm gonna go to the next section. Squeaky door gets what? OIL or grease? There's a story behind the OIL. I'll tell you that one of these days, okay? Whenever there's a, there's a word that ends with OIL, I spell it. F-O-I-L, O-I-L, B-O-I-L, and there's a story behind it. Maybe next time somebody reminds me, I'll tell you the story. But when you have come to your wit's end and you're pissed off and you're ready to kick the cat, shoot the dog because you can't do a problem, send it to me. It'll send me the hyperlink in the morning. I'll say, okay, let's look at homework problem. I'll pull yours up, I'll click on it, it'll send me the exact problem that you tried to do, we'll all work it together, and then you'll have it so you can go home and do it. This gauges the class. If I get a lot of these, the class goes what? Slow. If I don't get a lot of these, the class goes what? Fast. Squeaky door gets the grease, you determine how fast this class goes. Who's got a question on that? Yes, ma'am. Good question, and that's the last thing that I'm going to talk about. And that is right here. I'm glad you reminded me. Pages, page, no, they're saved. No, grace, save, and done. Hold on, I'm getting there. I know it's 2 o'clock. I know. We get out at 2.15 or 2.10. All right, I got plenty of time. Ebook. Let's go to chapter 3. Let's go to 3.2, that's where I was, and click e-text. This is the book, you can print it every 10 pages. So 10 pages from 80 is 90. So whenever you print these 10 pages, go to page 90, and print those 10 pages. You hit the print button right up here, and it'll ask you to print up to 10 pages. So, does everybody in here have a book? Yes, you do. Where is it? It's online. So now you see why I don't care what you bring to class. Because everybody has a book once you get on to Fort Compass. You can use an old book, you can use a new book, you can share a book, you can rent a book, you can buy a new book, you can use a book two or three years. I even have a couple of books in my office. First come, first serve. See me after class if you're interested. Okay? There's two options you have as far as the access code. You can buy a new book with the access code. Did anybody buy it? Anybody wrapped up? Or? Let me see. If you don't mind. My head's spreading out now. We had just passed. Come with this. I don't want this in the card Okay, all right, well, I don't think you want, I feel something in there, but it may be, I don't see a gap. Yeah. 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 This is the access code. You can get it. Where did you get yours if you rented yours? Okay, some people are buying them from Amazon. How much does it pay? That's good. And you get the access code with it. 
give Amazon 60 bucks, rent a book, and you can, you can get it back. And that's the thing now is renting books because you don't, you, you only spend 60 bucks and you get it back to them. So. Mm -hmm. And that's the book. It comes with the access code, or I don't think this one has it, but I feel something in it. Uh, okay. Okay. Okay, so that's how you get it. At the bookstore, you can buy this. Did you get this at the bookstore? Okay. And what book are you going to use? Say he's going to use these books. This is 103 bucks, right? Yeah. I thought it was 130 for 103. Online, I think this access code is 130. 130. So if you go online, go to, you got to go through the bridge, right? Mm -hmm. On your, I hate that, but you got to go to that stupid Blackboard. You got to go through Blackboard, hit your math 120, math 120, hit the bridge to, and go to register or whatever, and they'll tell you how to get it online. 103 online, 130 without the book. And 160 with the book, right? Let y'all, okay, I tell y'all, 